Hi there, and welcome to my very basic guide to antenna efficiency. And for this, and for some subsequent videos, I'll be looking at ground-mounted vertical antennas. So what is antenna efficiency? Well, when we examine efficiency, we look at two things, two resistive elements of efficiency. And we're going to be looking at radiation resistance and something called loss resistance. Now, for the purposes of this, in terms of efficiency, um, when we're looking at radiation and loss resistance, we should consider radiation resistance to be effectively good resistance and loss resistance to be bad resistance. And because we're looking at resistance, of course, both are measured in ohms. Let's look at the good side of things first of all, so radiation resistance. What this basically is, and I put this into the uh, italic bold writing there, is the amount of power that is consumed as useful radiation rather than lost as heat in the earth or in the conductor. In other words, it's the amount of power we're actually pushing out from the antenna. So it basically makes sense, therefore, that we try to keep the radiation resistance as high as possible to achieve maximum efficiency. And it's largely determined by the physical length of the antenna. You can also improve it by end loading, for example, maybe using a capacity hat or something similar, a short vertical as well. Now, on the other side of the coin is lost resistance. Now, with lost resistance, we want to keep this as low as possible. And this is where loss resistance can creep up. And this is how I should say it, can, it could creep up and become a problem. First of all, you could have losses in the actual conductor itself, in the wire or in the aluminium you're using to act as your, as your radiator. Um, you could have losses in loading elements, such as coils, for example, or traps. You will especially with ground-mounted verticals, which we're looking at here, you will have loss as a consequence of objects in the near field of the antenna, several wavelengths away. If you're in a small garden, for example, your house, your neighbour's houses, sheds, any buildings, any objects nearby, physical objects, will provide some form of loss resistance. But the one thing we can control, a little bit anyway, are ground losses, the bottom one. And in fact, it's ground losses in the near field that is often the biggest factor. Um, two things about ground losses. One thing we can control easily, one thing we can't. The one thing we can't really control is the conductivity of the earth beneath the antenna. So if you live near the sea on salty ground, for example, on a salt marsh, then you will have very, very good, excellent, in fact, uh, conductivity in the ground. If you live in the middle of a desert somewhere, then you're going to have, in all likelihood anyway, pretty poor conductivity. Most of us live in areas which are probably designated to be average ground. And that's what we're going to be using uh, both today and in future videos when we're looking at ground-mounted verticals. We're going to be modelling everything or looking at everything in terms of average ground. The other part of ground losses which you can control is the amount of radials you have under the antenna the amount of ground radials. And uh, it doesn't surprise you to know that for certain lengths of verticals, notice I use certain lengths, that the amount of radials you put down is pretty key to how efficient your antenna is going to be. We'll cover that more in future videos. So therefore, we want to keep our radiation resistance as high as we can and keep loss resistance as low as we can. So how do we calculate efficiency? Well, we can use a fairly simple formula. Now, by the way, there are, there's a lot of debate about this, about how efficiency, efficiency even, should be calculated. But this is probably the most widely used formula and the one that will suffice in terms of providing an illustration, not just today, but in other weeks and other videos I'll be doing, in terms of how we can vary our design of ground-mounted vertical antennas and what that can mean for efficiency. So the formula is quite simple, really. It's the radiation resistance in ohms over radiation resistance again, plus the loss resistance times 100. And that gives us a percentage efficiency figure. So let's look at an example. Now, as I said just now, the radiation resistance you're typically going to have will vary according to the length of the antenna. So typically, the longer your vertical, in all likelihood, the greater the radiation resistance. Now, most people, of course, use quarter-wave verticals. They work very well. 
and lots of people ground mount those. Now let's assume a couple of things here to provide an illustration. So let's assume then that the ground loss beneath the quarter wavelength vertical is about 15 ohms. Now that 15 ohm figure is a pretty reasonable ground loss figure. It doesn't of course take into account anything else except the ground loss. So there'll be other factors which will probably increase that slightly as well. But let's go with a 15 ohm figure for our illustration. And you'll typically achieve just purely in terms of ground loss or ground resistance, uh, a 15 ohm figure with around, well, on average ground, about 32 quarter wave ground radials, all right? Or 64 eight wave, depending on how many you put down. Of course, you don't forget, you don't have to have resonant, vert uh, resonant radials as ground radials. But let's say we've got 32 quarter wave worth of ground radials down. That gives us about 15 ohms. Now, with a quarter wave, the textbooks tell us that the radiation resistance is around 35, 36 ohms. Let's go with 35 ohms. So let's apply that then to that uh, particular formula. And when we do, this is what we get. So the figure in green and red, you can see there. So the radiation resistance, remember, is 35 ohms and the loss resistance is 15. When we apply it to that little formula, we get a figure, as you can see, of 70%. 35 over 50 times 100. What does this mean? Well, it means that roughly 70 of your 100 watts that you put into your antenna will be radiated from this antenna. Now you think, oh, I've lost 30 watts, that's terrible. Well, if we apply that to dB, we're only looking at about 1.7 dB, which in the greater scheme of things isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. And we we'll can bear that in mind, I think, that 70% efficiency figure will bear that in mind for future uh, videos as well, where we compare other lengths of verticals. But for now, that gives you an idea of what a fairly typical quarter wave vertical installation will look like. Just bearing in mind, of course, uh, that's on average ground, and I haven't included any other factors for the loss resistance, just purely the, the ground radials and assuming average ground. So what if we use a very short non-resonant vertical? I mean, mobile whips, for example, are a perfect example of that, aren't they? So let's say, for example, our antenna is a 20th of a wavelength long. That's 5% of the wavelength long. So that could be a one meter tall vertical on 20 or a two meter long vertical on 40 and so on. Now, you'll have a radiation resistance somewhere around one ohm. But you would probably won't mind that because when you uh, check your SWR, you might have a flat one to one SWR. And you're thinking, well, that's fine then. I've got a flat SWR, that must be good. Well, however, if we apply the efficiency calculator to that, don't forget, if you've got a one-to-one -one SWR and you're feeding it with 50 ohm coax, you have basically got a resistive 50 ohm match. So if you've got radiation resistance of one ohm, you will surely would have a loss resistance of 49 ohms to make up the 50 because you've got a one-to-one -one match. Therefore, if we apply that to the formula, our efficiency is 1 over 50. That's 2%. So effectively, therefore, you put 100 watts into this antenna, then you're transmitting 2 watts. If you're putting out 10 watts, you're transmitting 0.2 of a watt, and so on. So this is where very short, non-resonant verticals can become grossly inefficient unless we try and do a couple of things about that. Now, one thing you can do is to provide some loading to the antenna. Lots of people do quite well, actually, on the lower bands when they operate mobile. First of all, you need to have a very, very good ground, some very, very good bonding, and to try and minimise loss resistance there. What they also do is provide things like capacity hats to elongate the length of the antenna electrically. You quite often see people with... Um, with sort of spokes coming at the top of their, uh, their mobile whip. That's designed to increase the antenna um, length electrically uh, rather than physically. And it can improve things quite well. So in general terms, how do we improve the efficiency of that little whip? Well, there's two things that we can do. First of all, we can lengthen the antenna. Now we can do that with loading or we can just make it a longer antenna. Let's pretend we're not putting this on our car. <laughs> we're operating portable or at home. Now, if we contrast that little whip, that little one twentieth of a wavelength long antenna with a half wavelength long, feather the base in the same way, 
Well, a half wave will have a radiation resistance of at least around 1,500 to 2,000 ohms, maybe slightly more. So if we've got 2,000 ohms of radiation resistance, and even if we still have loss resistance around 49 ohms, you can see that we, still, we then have a very high efficiency, which is why half-wave antennas, especially N-fed half-waves or half-wave verticals fed at the base, do not really require an extensive radial system because their radiation resistance is already very high because of the physical length of the antenna. Um, the one thing you will have as an issue with this antenna, however, of course, is you'll notice that you haven't got anywhere near a, an altogether 50 ohm match. So you will have to obviously bring that very high SWR down. And lots of people use 49 to 1 uh, transformers, which in itself will induce some loss, maybe up to a couple of dB. So that will bring things down a little bit. Or you could make a, a monoband, very, very, or quite efficient LC uh, network there at the base, which will mean that you won't be able to use the antenna even on any harmonics, but you will be able to have a pretty efficient system. The other thing that we can do to improve the efficiency is to greatly improve the radial field you may have underneath that antenna. So let's say you've got that Let's say you've got an antenna for 80 metres and it's only 4 metres tall because you're, you have restrictions for various reasons in your neighbourhood for high antennas. And in theory, we could do this. We could eliminate the loss resistance like we have in that formula there. So we can have literally 1 over 1 and we can have a 100% efficient antenna. But you probably are about to realise what I'm going to say here. If we achieve this loss resistance, we pay a price. There's two reasons we pay a price by putting down all that copper or wire on the ground. The first thing is we would have an SWR now of 50 to 1 because we have a total resistance of 1 ohm, a very low impedance. Effectively, tough for any tuner to handle at the feed point. Uh, high voltages, etc. So if we then are going to try and offset that by running a bit of coax before we get to the tuner, say 30, 40 feet, 15, 20 metres or something, that'll probably bring, or will bring, the SWR down. But goodness knows what sort of loss you'll get in that feed line, which will take away a lot of the hard work you've done to actually put the radials down in the first place. Because for number two there, we can see that if you were to try and achieve anywhere near that zero figure or close then with that radiation resistance you already have of 1 ohm, you would need to put down around 3 quarters of a mile or 1.2 kilometres of quarter wave radials on average ground. So you'll need to have a very, very sizable yard and a very, very uh, durable back in order to do that. And probably a gold card at Lowe's or B&Q, wherever you get your Bunnings, wherever you get your, your wire from. So efficiency is an important measure. But of course, it's only one of three aspects of the antenna system that we need to think about, especially for ground-mounted verticals. We also got to remember about antenna radiation patterns that we want to achieve, especially if we're chasing DX, somewhere portable, for example. And also how we feed and match the antenna. We'll be looking at all three aspects, or I'll be looking at all three aspects, and hopefully you'll join me over the next few weeks. But for now, I hope that's given you some insight into what efficiency is. And please leave any comments below if you think you want to add something to the debate. 7-3, and thanks for watching. There'll be another video coming up soon for you to click on. And if you fancy subscribing, that'd be wonderful. Take care, and, uh, well, enjoy your radios too. Bye-bye.